Hello and welcome. My name is Angela Thompson and I appreciate you joining me. Today I'd like to share a project with you on behalf of tinypandora.com. Let's begin. Wrap your black strip with the long, thin, white strip. Run it through your pasta machine on the thickest setting. Trim it to four inches in length and stack it with your gold clay. Run that through the pasta machine on your thickest setting. Stack your white and your color and run them through the machine on your thickest setting. Then combine these two strips, stack them light, dark, light, dark. Run it through your pasta machine on your thickest setting. Press to adhere to your cutting surface and using your cutting tool, cut out two to three strips lengthwise. These strips will become the walls and the lines within the inside of your geode. Take your four inch square and firmly press to your tile. Lightly trace out your desired liquid geode coaster shape and then cut out with your X-Acto knife. Then take one of the strips and lightly secure to the outer edge of your geode. We are working on top of the base, not alongside of it. Make sure the colored stripes are on top. I suggest you cut the stripes at an angle. The joint will be smoother. The easiest way to do this is to tilt the strip onto its side and cut. Rejoin and smooth in the direction of the stripes for the best finish. Continue adding your strips to your base geode, working from the outside end to form your inner rings and walls. Cut all strips as we've talked about above, smoothing each joint as you go. You'll want two or three inner rings and then a small ovalish shape in the center for your core. You can leave space between your rings as shown or put them closer together. It's entirely up to you. I wanted smooth, empty channels to work with, so I chose to leave space all the way around. Continue working with your geode and make any adjustments necessary 
to ensure that all of your stripes are firmly attached to the base. Use minimal pressure so as not to distort, but enough pressure to ensure a good connection. Once you're done with your geode base, set it aside for a moment. Adjust your strip cutter to a width that includes the base geode and the height of the walls. The height of the geode from the base of the tile to the top of the wall is the measurement you need. If you're using the RJ Craft cutter like I am in this video, one magnet added should do the trick. If you're using a ruler, you should be in the area of about a quarter of an inch thick. Cut one long strip of your gold tone and wrap that strip around the outside wall of your geode. Trim it with a straight cut and smooth the joint. After your geode has completely cooled, make two or three colors of liquid clay to use. You can either use Kato's colored liquid clays or make your own using alcohol ink and Sculpey Liquid Clear. Add about nine drops to two to three millimeters of liquid clay. Stir until well combined. The next thing you'll want to make is what I call a sparkle mix, and it's going to add a little bit of zing to your geode. Again, start with two to three millimeters of Sculpey Liquid Clear in a cup, and then add your inclusions and combine thoroughly. To get my mix, I used ultra fine white glitter and white mylar shavings from my Tiny's Treasures kit, and I also added some Christy Friesen's Reflections in. You can use any inclusions you like. Always stir your mixes thoroughly before using. Start with your first color and add a thin layer to the outside ring of your geode. Using your needle tool or toothpick, pop any air bubbles as you go and work the color all the way to the walls on either side of the channel. Other than tweaks, this is the only color layer we will add, so make sure we get a nice, even, thin coat along the bottom. Continue by adding your second color to the next ring. Again, work it fully to the edges and pop any air bubbles as you go. You should be using enough clay to completely cover the base only. All of the liquid clay will be applied in thin layers to achieve the look of depth. Turn your geode and look at it from all angles to ensure you haven't left any of the base visible. Now we're going to add some inclusions. You can use glitter, beads, rocks, mylar shavings, any kind of reflective material works really nice. Um, you've got a lot of different options if you do have the Tiny Treasures kit and you can work with just about any color you can imagine. Think about the effect you'd like to achieve. We're going for depth and this layer is the deepest layer, so it's the furthest away from our eye. I like to put reflective items in this layer. 
uh, the glitter, the mylar shavings, they all look nice when there's added inclusions on top of them. And you'll see that as we go along, how things work um, backwards. So I'm adding some different blue glitters. I think there's two different um, blue glitters and then the mylar shavings that I'm going to put on this level. One thing that I would caution against using in this layer or any of the levels really are rhinestone type things. Those are usually reflective dependent upon the cut along the top and that cut uh, gets filled in when there's something liquid on top of it so it doesn't have the reflective power. Um, it will still reflect through but that's likely just to be a little round circle of reflection without the dimension. So we're going to keep adding things into this until we're comfortable. And then the next thing that I wanted to do was allow some of the pearl and white on the bottom to shine through. So I lightly rimmed my last ring here close aside to the core with a line of the Sculpey Liquid Clear. And then as you can see, I'm just using my um, pointy tool to add little tiny bits of the blue color on the other side of the wall and then just kind of work them together a little bit. Um, whatever you want to do is fine. This is just how I wanted to um, bring some interest back toward the core. Once you have your innermost rings completed to your satisfaction, squirt a little bit of the Sculpey Liquid Clear into the core and then fill it with the material of your choice. I'm using a chunky glass glitter from Reflections in a color called Antique Gold. But you can fill this with um, some of the items from the Tiny Treasure Kit. There's a chunkier gold glitter in there that would work beautiful. Um, you can put natural stones in the center of it, little tiny crystals, anything you want to. And if you do what I just did here and spill some on the outside, it's pretty forgiving stuff. Just scoop it up and fill the hole back in and away we'll go. This is what my geode looked like after my first baking. Here's a good tip. Take a photograph of your geode now before you start your next layer. It's a good reference tool. So we're going to add a complete layer of Sculpey Liquid Clear to the innermost rings, all of your rings of your geode. And it's a really, it's a thin film. We just want to put some down so the the inclusions that we're adding will stay in the right area. So stir your inclusion, your sparkle mix up. This is our first time for using it, so mix it really well. And then do what I'm doing here or however you want to apply some. But this is going to be our additive for this layer is quite a few swishes, swirls, or additions of the sparkle mix. And then if we want to add any more glitter or inclusions, we can do that as well. It's good to layer things. So I'm starting here with some more of the glitter that is a repetition from the layer below. The layer below will look darker each time that we go down a level. So it gives it more depth when you add layers on top of layers. So using your pitcher as a reference tool, decide where you want to put some additional inclusions. And if you decide not to, that's fine too. I decided to add some black micro beads that were also in the Tiny Treasures kit to the ring right next to my core. I want to start building up a lot of interest there.
I'm also going to add a little bit more of the liquid clear and some glitter to my center core to start building a little depth there as well. This is how my geode looked after the second baking. Notice how the two layers have stacked and you can see the inclusions that are on the bottom layer through the layer we just applied. Take another photo of your geode for reference. Again, we're gonna fill the geode with liquid Sculpey Clear. And then we're going to add any additional inclusions that we need to add. If your geode is already at the top of your walls, just skip this step. This is how my geode looked after the third baking. I'm going to give it a close look and decide what I want to do. I know that I want to work with that ring around the core and bring out some more interest in that. So I'm going to take these four vials of miscellaneous items that came in my tiny treasure kit, dump them out and see what I've got here. There's a lot to work with. So I really like some of these little um, almost elongated ovals that are blue. I'm gonna put some of these up on there and some crystals, put down a little bit of liquid clay and work on top of that until I like the way it looks. Next, I'm gonna put down a little bit of color, the same color that I've worked with at the very beginning in the different layers. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of the glitter just to pop certain things forward a little bit more and uh, continue working on the illusion of depth. So I'm going to add a few more swishes of color as well. Um, to this inner ring just to highlight a little bit there. It looks a little bland, so I want to put some more of the um, mylar or glitter here and pop that back up. And I'm doing the same thing along the top, just another little tiny bit of color to accentuate and some more glitter to put those pops in. Anytime you get a little bit of overflow or dribble that you weren't really intending, like on the bottom left of my area, just wipe it with a, an alcohol wipe or a paper towel spritzed with a little alcohol. It'll be fine. Now I'm going to add in the sparkle mixture. I just want to um, give it a little more pop. So I've set my um, last layer here with the corrections in it, and I've allowed my geode to completely cool. Now I'm going to apply a heavy layer of the Sculpey Liquid Clear. 
I want to start leveling it out and working toward a smooth, even finish. You've taken your levels up to the walls level, so now we're just going to bring it up a little further than that. Use a soft brush, work it all the way to the edge. Try not to allow the clay to bleed over the edge. Um, there's, there's a natural little lip there because of your foil, so that'll help hold it on. Um, so after you've coated the geode and worked it to the edges, allow it to rest for a minute and it will kind of self-level. And then put it in the oven and bake it. Going to leave it in there for about 30 minutes tented at 325. Allow it to cool. You're looking for a level and smooth finish. It took three coats of the liquid clear to bring mine up to a level that was smooth and even. And an add note to this, I spoke with Pandora and she let me know that deep shine is completely bakeable. So if you're using deep shine on your piece as your resin, you can certainly put that back in the oven to bake it. I thought that was super exciting.